Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to talk about polycythemia vera and its symptoms, causes, diagnosis, treatment, etc. You can download this note from the link in my description box. First, let's see what polycythemia vera is. Polycythemia vera is a type of blood cancer in which your bone marrow makes too many blood cells, particularly red blood cells. As you can see from its name, poly means a lot, cyte means cells, and emia means blood. So polycythemia means a lot of cells in the blood, and vera means true. We will later see what it means. Polycythemia vera is a type of myeloproliferative neoplasms. Myeloproliferative neoplasms, MPNs, are types of blood cancer that begin with an abnormal gene mutation in the stem cell in the bone marrow. The change leads to an overproduction of bone marrow cells from the myeloid lineage, involving any combination of white cells, red cells, and platelets. The three most common types are polycythemia vera, essential thrombocythemia, and primary myelofibrosis. Polycythemia vera is the most common myeloproliferative neoplasm. It happens when your bone marrow produces too many red blood cells. Essential thrombocythemia happens when your bone marrow makes too many platelets. Myelofibrosis is the most aggressive myeloproliferative neoplasm. In myelofibrosis, abnormal stem cells are produced in your bone marrow and they become inflamed and make scar tissue. So in polycythemia vera, the increase in your blood cells, especially red blood cells, causes your blood to thicken, slowing its flow, which may cause serious problems such as blood clots that may lead to strokes or tissue and organ damage. Also, one more point to remember. Erythropoietin is a hormone produced from the kidney and it stimulates the bone marrow to produce red blood cells. So in PV, we have an excess in the red blood cells which are produced due to a gene mutation and it's independent of erythropoietin. So erythropoietin is no longer needed and we can see low levels of erythropoietin in polycythemia vera. Next, let's see the symptoms. PV progresses slowly so many people with PV don't have noticeable signs or symptoms. But if you have symptoms, they might include itchiness, especially after a warm bath or shower. The reason is thought to be because the extra red blood cells prompt your immune system to release histamine from basophils, which makes your skin itch. And it's present in approximately 40% of patients with PV. Facial flushing can also occur in polycythemia vera because of the increased number of red blood cells in your body and the slow speed at which they are moving through the veins and arteries. Because of the blood getting thicker, there will be tendency to form blood clots and a higher risk of heart attack, stroke, and pulmonary embolism. You may also see bleeding problems such as nosebleed, bleeding gums, and heavy menstruation. Your spleen helps your body fight infection and filter unwanted material such as old or damaged blood cells. The increased number of blood cells in polycythemia vera makes your spleen work harder and the blood cells collect in your spleen which causes it to enlarge. You may see feeling of fullness soon after eating and bloating or pain in the left upper quadrant abdomen due to the enlarged spleen. There is an increased number of blood cells so there is more cell turnover, thus also producing more uric acid in your body. This may cause uric acid stones in your kidney and gout which may present as a painful swelling of one joint, often the big toe. The increased red cell volume and viscosity may cause ischemia of body tissues resulting in vague symptoms such as fatigue, headache, dizziness, visual disturbances, tinnitus, dyspnea, and erythromalalgia. Erythromalalgia means pain in your extremities. It is a classic symptom of polycythemia vera, and there is a burning pain in the hands or feet, usually accompanied by a redness or swelling, as you can see in this picture. Erythromalalgia is caused by an increased platelet count or increased platelet aggregation, resulting in the formation of tiny blood clots in the vessels of the extremity. It resolves rapidly with aspirin. 10 to 15 percent of patients with PV eventually develop myelofibrosis and bone marrow failure. Acute leukemia occurs spontaneously in 1 to 2.5 percent of cases. What are the causes of PV? A mutation or change in the JAK2 gene is known to be the main cause of PV. The JAK2 gene makes a protein that helps produce blood cells in your bone marrow, thus leading to the overproduction of bone marrow cells. Even though PV is caused by a mutation in the gene, it is not inherited from parents to children. So what are the risk factors? PV is more commonly seen in adults between 50 and 75 years old, and men are more likely to get PV. However, women tend to get the disease at a younger age. So let's see how PV is diagnosed. 
In addition to your medical history and physical exam, the doctor will order a blood test. In the blood test of PV patient, we will see more red blood cells than normal, and sometimes an increase in the platelets or white blood cells too. As there is a greater percentage of red blood cells that make up the total blood volume, we will see an increase in the hematocrit. And also there is an increased number of red blood cells, so we will see an increase in the hemoglobin, which is an iron-rich protein in the red blood cells that carries oxygen. And we can also see high blood volume, red cell mass. We need to remember that in PV, we can see low levels of erythropoietin. Why is it important? Polycythemia vera is also known as primary polycythemia, and as I mentioned in the first slide, its name is polycythemia vera, which means true polycythemia, because the cause starts in the bone marrow. In PV, a gene mutation causes the bone marrow to produce a lot of red blood cells. However, in the secondary polycythemia, the cause is usually by the excess production of the hormone erythropoietin, caused by some other condition in your body, such as long-term exposure to low oxygen levels. A lack of oxygen over a long period can cause your body to make more of the hormone erythropoietin, thus resulting in your body making more red blood cells than normal. This leads to the thicker blood as seen in PV. So in primary polycythemia or PV, you can see lower erythropoietin, but in secondary polycythemia, you will see high levels of erythropoietin. You should remember this. If your doctor suspects that you have polycythemia vera, he or she might recommend a bone marrow aspiration or biopsy. It involves taking a sample of solid bone marrow material and withdrawing the liquid portion of your marrow. The bone marrow biopsy findings include the excess of blood cells in the bone marrow or the excess of mature megakaryocytes, which are the cells that make platelets. The doctor might also order specific gene testing, and if you have polycythemia vera, the analysis of your bone marrow or blood might show the presence of JAK2 gene mutation. What are the treatments of PV? There is no cure for polycythemia vera. Treatment focuses on reducing the risk of complications and to ease your symptoms. The most common treatment for polycythemia vera is plebotomy, which is having frequent blood withdrawals using a needle in a vein. This decreases your blood volume and the number of excess blood cells. The frequency of phlebotomy differs depending on your condition and severity. The doctor may recommend that you take a low dose of aspirin in order to reduce your risk of blood clots. The low-dose aspirin may also help reduce the burning pain in your feet or hands. And you may also take the hydroxyurea, which is a drug that reduces the number of red blood cells. If lobotomy alone is not enough, your doctor may suggest hydroxyurea. There are also treatments to reduce itching if you have the bothersome itching, and they include antihistamines, ultraviolet light treatment, and SSRIs, which are selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. If you have risk factors for heart and blood vessel disease, you may be prescribed medications to control them, including high blood pressure, diabetes, and abnormal cholesterol. One of the final or last treatment option is a bone marrow transplant. You may consider this option when your PV is advanced and all the other treatments have been ineffective. Now, let's see the prognosis. The average life expectancy after being diagnosed with PV is 20 years. The average death of a PV patient is around 77 years old. The most common cause of death are blood clots and then advancing cancer. So if you have PV, how should you care for yourself? You should exercise in order to promote good blood flow. You should also avoid tobacco in order to reduce the risk of blood clots. You should drink plenty of water and avoid the low oxygen environment. You should also take care of your skin such as using the sunscreen when you're out in the sun and also avoiding extreme temperatures such as wearing gloves when you're out in the cold. You should also watch out for sores in your feet. Now, it is the overview time. So polycythemia vera is a type of myeloproliferative neoplasm and you can see an increase in the all blood cells, particularly red blood cells. And because there is an increase in the red blood cells, there is a lower erythropoietin by negative feedback and then the increase in the red blood cells causes your blood to thicken and causing the slower flow. And then you develop a tendency to form blood clots which may lead to strokes or tissue and organ damage. The symptoms include itchiness especially after a warm bath or shower or flushed face and blood clots, bleeding problems, enlarged spleen and gout. You may also see erythromelalgia, which is a burning pain in hands or feet with redness or swelling. The cause of PV is a mutation in JAK2 gene, thus causing your bone marrow to produce more red blood cells. The risk factors include adults between 50 and 75 years old and men are more likely to get PV. 
In the blood test, you will see higher amount of RBCs and higher hematocrit and hemoglobin. However, you will see low erythropoietin. The doctor may order bone marrow aspiration or biopsy and also specific gene testing for JAK2 gene mutation. The treatments include phlebotomy, low-dose aspirin, and hydroxyurea. That's it for today. If the video was helpful, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much for listening. Bye-bye.